You're lying. You can't be serious. <gasps> you are. It's chemist tea time. Hello and welcome back. I can see you are all very excited to continue learning about chemistry. So let's begin. Today we will be continuing on with Lewis theory by delving into covalent bonding and learning about Lewis structures. We have seen a number of models which chemists use to make complex structures more simplistic. This is what we see when dealing with the Lewis model. We will begin to learn how to draw Lewis structures, which are going to show the arrangement of atoms in molecules. This model will be focused on atoms obtaining an octet, or a duet in the case for hydrogen. We have discussed covalent bonds, which occur when non-metals share electrons. We will use Lewis dot structures to describe covalent bonding. Let's take, for example, chlorine. It has seven valence electrons and needs only one electron to form an octet. If two chlorine atoms form a covalent bond by sharing the unpaired electrons, they each obtain an octet. This can be seen in the following diagram. The electrons that are shared amongst the chlorines are referred to as bonding pairs, and the unpaired electrons are known as lone pairs. Lone pairs do not participate in the formation of a covalent bond. Let's go ahead and do this for the formation of water, H2O. Both hydrogen atoms have one valence electron, and oxygen has six valence electrons. The oxygen will share an electron with each hydrogen atom, forming an octet in respect to oxygen, and each hydrogen atom will form a duet. So in this structure, there are two bonding pairs and two lone pairs. When each atom shares one electron, this is a single covalent bond. Another way to write a Lewis structure is to represent a covalent bond as a dash. But keep in mind that one dash always represents two electrons. The Lewis model also makes it possible to form multiple bonds between two atoms. The formation of a double bond and triple bonds occurs when atoms share more than one electron. In the case of a double bond, each atom shares two electrons, thus having two bonding pairs. In a triple bond, each atom shares three electrons, thus having three bonding pairs. Multiple bonds form in order to obtain an octet, or stable configuration. Let's look at diatomic oxygen and nitrogen. In the case for oxygen, each atom has six total electrons and two unpaired electrons. These unpaired electrons can be shared to form a double bond so that each atom has an octet. In the case for nitrogen, each atom has five valence electrons with three unpaired electrons, which can be shared to form a triple bond in order to obtain an octet. Remember that only unpaired electrons are able to form bonds. Since we have seen what Lewis structures look like, let's go ahead and learn how to draw these structures. When drawing these structures, you want to follow these three steps. First, identify the total number of valence electrons. Second, Determine your central atom, which is either your least electronegative atom or your unique atom. Third, draw a skeletal structure and distribute remaining electrons in pairs to the terminal atoms. If octets for atoms cannot be accommodated, then form multiple bonds. Also keep in mind that if you have hydrogen in your system, it will always be a terminal atom because it can only form duets. Let's practice these steps by drawing the Lewis structure for phosphorus trichloride, so PCl3. Step 1. Identify the total number of valence electrons. This is done by adding all of the valence electrons of each atom. Phosphorus has 5 valence electrons, and each chlorine has 7 valence electrons. Let's add these up, so 5 plus 3 times 7 equals 26. We have 26 electrons to distribute. Step 2. Identify your central atom. In this case, phosphorus will be our central atom because it is both the unique atom and it is also the least electronegative atom as well. Step 3, draw a skeletal structure and distribute electrons. By skeletal structure, I simply mean you draw a bond to each terminal atom from the central atom, which looks like the following. Once we have our skeletal structure, we can begin distributing the remaining electrons around the terminal atoms. So these are our chlorine atoms, and first completing their octets. 
Once we have completed the octets for each terminal atom, then any remaining electrons can be placed on the central atom as such. Make sure you always double check the total number of electrons and check that each atom has an octet. This is a common error students make when drawing Lewis structures. Let's do another example, such as carbon dioxide, CO2. Step 1, identify the total number of valence electrons. Carbon has 4 valence electrons and each oxygen has 6 valence electrons. So, 4 plus 2 times 6 is equal to 16. We have 16 electrons to distribute. Step 2, identify our central atom. In this case, carbon will be our central atom because it is both our unique atom and the least electronegative. Step 3, draw a skeletal structure and distribute electrons. Next, let's begin distributing the electrons to form octets, first with the terminal atoms. Once we have distributed our electrons, you probably notice that carbon does not have an octet. This is an example where we form multiple bonds to form an octet. In order to do so, we use one of the lone pairs on oxygen to form a carbon-oxygen double bond. However, after forming one double bond, we still know that carbon still only has six electrons around it. So we must form another double bond to complete its octet. Our final structure looks like the following. Carbon is double bonded to both oxygen atoms. I know today's lesson covered a lot of new topics, and we also began learning how to draw Lewis structures. It is important that you watch the corresponding lecture videos to make sure you are grasping how to draw these structures. From this point forward, we will be utilizing these structures in the subsequent chapters. So it is important that you can draw these structures with ease. Thank you for watching Chemist Tea Time. And next lesson, we will continue with Lewis structures. Until then, have a splendid day.